welcome once more to another video in our youtube channel and thanks for watching so in today's video we are going to be looking at a problem in the topic ladder problems so the equation reads a uniform ladder of length 2a where a is greater than zero rests in equilibrium with its lower end on a rough horizontal ground and its upper end on a smooth vertical wall the plane containing the ladder is perpendicular to the wall and the ladder makes an angle of alpha with the ground where an alpha is equal to the square root of 3. Now the objective is to determine the coefficient of friction between the ladder and the ground. So let's see how we approach problems like this. So whenever you're given a, a problem like this, first you need to draw the diagram. So let's draw the diagram together. So we have our wall and then we have the ground. Now the ladder rests on the wall and the ground where the upper end of the ladder is on the vertical wall and the vertical wall is smooth meaning there is no friction and then the lower end of the ladder rests on a rough horizontal ground as you can see so since the ground is rough it means that there is friction that is why we are asked to find the coefficient of friction between the ladder which is this and the ground so let's just label maybe the lower end of the ladder we call it a and then the upper end of the ladder we call it b so let's try to indicate the various forces that are acting on this ladder so we have the reaction force which is acting at the wall that is between the ladder and the wall we can call it um r w we also have the normal reaction that is acting on the ground that is between the ladder and the ground we can call it ROH now we also have um, the frictional force which is acting on the ground we can call it F and finally we have the also we, we had an angle which was alpha the angle between the ladder and the ground because we have been told that the ladder makes an angle of alpha with the ground means that it makes this angle alpha here with the horizontal that is the ground finally we have the weight of the ladder which acts vertically downwards we can call it w now since this is the weight of the ladder it acts at the center of the ladder since the ladder is having length 2a it means that the distance from the point b right up to the center of the ladder where the weight is acting is going to be a and the distance from the center of the ladder right up to the foot of the ladder is also going to be a now at equilibrium because um, we have been told that the, the ladder is at equilibrium at equilibrium we are going to use two concepts the very first concept is that the sum of forces is equal to zero now we have both vertical forces and horizontal forces so we are going to call the vertical forces the forces in the y direction and the horizontal forces the forces in the x direction so it means the sum of horizontal forces is zero and the sum of vertical forces is zero now what are the horizontal forces we have the friction and we have the reaction at the wall since they are in opposite direction it means that one will be negative and one will be positive if we consider our reference frame so let's just say all forces acting to the right are positive and all forces acting to the left are negative or vice versa so with that if we consider the sum of forces in the horizontal direction to be zero it means that um, we consider all forces to the left as positive and all forces to the right as negative it all depends on you we are going to get f minus rw to be equal to zero now if we take some of the forces in the vertical direction equal to zero in the vertical direction we have two forces we have the weight of the ladder which is acting downwards and we have the normal reaction between the, the normal reaction at the ground that is the force between the ladder and the ground which is arrow and it is acting upward so maybe if we take the forces that are acting upward to be positive and the forces acting downward to be negative you are going to have arrow n plus negative w which is the same as arrow n minus w is equal to zero so from this first guy here we have f is equal to arrow w and from the second we have um, arrow n is equal to w now the second concept we are going to use is the concept of moments so at equilibrium the moment or the sum of moments at about a point is also equal to zero 
we can we could also take the point b but i choose the point a because we have two forces acting and what is moment of a force about the point it is simply the force times its perpendicular distance from that point that's the moment of a force about the point so i decided to take the moment about the point a here because it is going to eliminate many forces it is going to eliminate the force arrow n and the force and the frictional force because they will have no perpendicular distance since they are acting on that point so from there if we take moment about the point a and we equate to zero now since we are dealing with the concept of moment it means we need to calculate distances so the forces arrow n and the forces and and the force arrow n and the force f have no they, they have no moment about the point a their moment is zero because there is no perpendicular distance so we just need to find the perpendicular distance of the weight from the point a and the perpendicular distance of the reaction at the one from the point a so it means we need this distance because the weight is acting vertically downward so to get the perpendicular distance from the point a i need to draw a horizontal line that passes through the point a that horizontal line is going to make an angle of 90 degrees with the weight so the distance from this um, point here right up to the point a is the perpendicular distance of the weight from the point a so if we consider if we if you look at this if you consider this right angle triangle here with angle alpha we want to find the adjacent we have the hypotenuse it means we can use cos so if we take cos alpha we are going to get adjacent over hypotenuse it means that the adjacent is going to be a cos alpha if you work it out now we need the perpendicular distance of the reaction at the wall from the point a meaning we, we we are also going to find this vertical distance here so we can use uh, a trigonometry ratio since we just consider the this right angle triangle here for example if you want to find the opposite we have the hypotenuse the hypotenuse is 2a because it is a plus a so sine of alpha is equal to the opposite which is what we are looking for divided by the hypotenuse which is 2a it means our opposite is equal to 2a sine alpha if you look for the um, opposite if you make the opposite the subject of the formula now this 2a sine alpha is the perpendicular distance of my reaction at the wall from the point a how can we see it maybe if i try to complete this other right angle triangle here this reaction force makes an angle of 90 degrees with this vertical and this vertical dotted line here passes through the point a so definitely this distance is also the distance 2a sine alpha now sum of moments about the point a equal to zero means that let's begin with the first force which is rw rw is the reaction at the wall and its perpendicular distance is this vertical distance here which is the same as 2a sine alpha so we have rw times 2a sine alpha so maybe since it is moment you can consider this is a um, moment in the clockwise direction you can consider all moments in the clockwise direction to be positive and moments in the anti-clockwise direction to be negative so rw times 2a sine alpha is going to be positive because it is in the clockwise direction now the other force is the weight of the ladder which causes an anti-clockwise moment so it is going to be negative since we are summing we are going to take plus now negative w times its perpendicular distance from the point a is a cos alpha and doing that we are going to equate to zero now from there we can um add this guy on both sides of the equation and we are going to get rw times 2a sine alpha is equal to w times a cos alpha now we can divide both sides by cos alpha now we are going to have sine alpha and cos alpha now the a's are going to cancel because a is greater than zero it is it cannot be equal to zero so distance cannot be zero so we can divide the a's and the a's if it was equal to zero then we cannot divide because zero divided by zero is indeterminate all right so cancelling now the a's um we are and dividing all through by cos alpha we are going to get sine alpha on cos alpha times two rw to be equal to w so sine alpha on cos alpha is tan alpha so tan alpha times 2 rw is equal to w so from there we can find um since we know rw is equal to f we just replace rw with f and then from there we look for f the frictional force 
the frictional force is equal to W divided by 2 tan alpha. But we know that what tan alpha is equal to the square root of 3 as it was given in the equation. It means that our F will be equal to W divided by 2 times the square root of 3. But our F here, the frictional force, can be written in terms of the coefficient of friction and the normal reaction at the ground. So it's, um, our F is equal to mu Rn, where mu is the coefficient of friction. Rn is a normal reaction at the ground, so we just replace it with its equivalence. So mu Rn is equal to W divided by 2 R2, two, um, the square root of 3. But what is Rn according to this equation? Rn is equal to W or W is equal to Rn. So from there, we replace W with Rn. So Rn is going to cancel and we get our mu to be equal to 1 over 2 times the square root of 3. And we can rationalize by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 3 and we have the coefficient of friction to be the square root of 3 divided by 6. So that was the aim of the equation and we have achieved the objective to find the coefficient of friction between the ladder and the ground. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on your post notifications so that whenever a video is uploaded, you'll be notified.